If there were five assets that I was thinking about investing in, but I wanted to know the most mathematically optimal way that I could invest in those five assets, how would I figure that out? That's the question we're about to answer. And I'm going to give you an example with five really common indexes or ETFs that people might be interested in investing in. So as you can see in column C, we're going to be putting in the S&P 500 index. Um, known as SPY, this as an ETF ticker. Then we have a bond index, a gold index, a NASDAQ index, and then Vanguard's All World Stock Index. And as you can see, based on this pie chart and these weights in row seven, we're going to be starting off with an equally weighted portfolio of 20% in each stock. But if I wanted to invest in the optimal amount, I would have to find out three things. And those three things are based on the Sharpe ratio. Now, the Sharpe ratio is a way to measure portfolio performance, and it's calculated as the expected return of the portfolio subtracted by the risk-free rate, and then all of that divided by the portfolio standard deviation. So there's really three things that we're going to have to find out. And let's start off with calculating the expected return of the portfolio. The first thing we're going to need is historical data on each of these five securities. So I'm gonna go over to this raw data sheet and you can see I've got the adjusted close prices for the last 16 years for each of the five securities. And the reason that I'm using the adjusted close prices is because the adjusted close prices include the effects of dividends and stock splits. So if you just use the normal stock price history, the normal close prices, you won't get an accurate assessment of the portfolio optimization or the measurement of a portfolio's performance statistics because it's missing those key values such as dividends and uh, stock splits. So if you want adjusted close prices, you can either follow my video here, which I do this in Python. So I got all these from Python, or you can go into uh, Yahoo Finance and you can just type in whichever security you're interested in up here. I did SPY, and then you can go to historical data and you can kind of just select which uh, range of data you're interested in and then hit download and you'll have those adjusted close prices right there. So anyways, we've got all these adjusted close prices for 16 years. So we're going all the way through to basically today when I'm recording this video. Now we're going to need the log normal daily returns. So one thing you could do, which a lot of people will do, is they'll just take the simple return, which is basically just taking um, the stock price of uh, one day minus the stock price of the previous day. And that basically gives you um, what was the return in dollar value. And then you can get it back to a percentage by taking the by dividing by the previous day. So that tells me that um, SPY went up 0.81%. But what I prefer to do is I actually want to take the uh, natural logarithm return, which is just going to be uh, one day's price divided by the previous day's price it, within this LN formula. And this is better because it's easier to annualize the, uh, the values once we need to find expected return and standard deviation if they're in this uh, log normal return. It's kind of an industry best practice. So I'm gonna go over here, hold control, hit down arrow, um, hold shift, highlight these five rows, and then hit control shift up arrow to bring me all the way back up to the top. Then I'm gonna hit control V and then just control F to just paste the formulas. So we've got all the formulas. So we've got every single day's log normal daily uh, change in price. And now we're gonna head back over to our uh, calculations sheet. And so we're gonna to need to find what was the annual return for that 16 year period for each of these five assets. And that's gonna be somewhat simple. We'll just use a formula called equals. And so we're gonna take uh, EXP. So we're gonna raise this to the power of E. So we're assuming uh, continuously compounded interest because we just wanna make this, uh, I guess the most mathematically accurate way we can do it, even if it is a little bit more complicated. Then we'll take the average formula and then we're going to grab this whole range for SPY. So I'm going to click the first cell, then hit control shift down arrow. And then I'm going to close that average and I will multiply by 252. And so the reason that I'm doing this is I'm basically taking what was the average daily return for uh, the S&P 500 index for every single day. So I'm getting an average daily return and then I'm multiplying it by 252 because that's the number of trading days in the year. So we're going to come out with basically what would be an average annual return. And then we're going to uh, just take that and subtract by one. 
And so that tells us that our average annual return for that 16 year period was 6.5%. I'm just gonna take that uh, control C to copy and then I'm gonna paste formulas for all of these. And so one thing I wanna note is that for our expected return, we are going to be using an assumption that the uh, past returns will be what is our expected returns in the future. And this is not a great assumption because um, you can't always expect what happened in the past to continue happening in the future. And so if you want to make this even more accurate, you could go out and look for different equity research firms or equity analysts estimates for the expected returns for the securities you're interested in, but you might have to pay for that. So I'm just it's kind of simplifying this by using the historical returns, but just so you know, this is not a great assumption to make. Next, we're gonna to have to determine the risk of our portfolio as measured by standard deviation. And we can use the daily returns that we just calculated uh, previously to determine the annual standard deviation. And we can do that with a rather simple formula. So we're just gonna take equals var dot P, and so you can have the choice between population and sample. I'm going to go with population because we've got about 4,000 returns here, so it's a pretty wide uh, body of data. And then now we're going to go back to the raw data sheet, and since we're looking at SPY, we're just going to once again, we're going to grab this whole range here. So I'm going to hit Control shift up um, That is not what I meant to do. So I'm grabbing this whole range, right? H4 through H4026. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to hit a... I'm just going to close this. And then I'm going to multiply it by 252. So that's, again, based on the number of trading days in the year. But we need to get this from variance into standard deviation. And standard deviation is just the square root of variance. So I'm going to wrap this whole thing in the square root function. And that should perfectly get us our annual standard deviation for each of these. So I'm going to hit Control c to copy. And then I will hit Control v to paste. There we go. So we've got all of our standard deviations. And one thing I just want to point out is, uh, so you see um, these three are equities, so they should have higher standard deviations er, than the rest, right? So this, this is making sense. Now we're going to have to assign a minimum and a maximum weight. And so we're basically saying to the portfolio optimizer, hey, you can't put, let's say if we start off at 10%, you can't put less than 10% into any of these stocks, right? And then if we put a max weight, let's say 40% to start off with, we'll just say you are not allowed to put more than 40% in any of these stocks. And then the more strict we make this, so the, the higher we put the minimum weight and the lower we put the maximum weight, the lower our sharp ratio is going to be. Okay, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. This optimal weight row here is what we're going to be solving for. And like I said earlier, we're just putting it equally weighted for now, but we'll come back to that and revisit it. So now, if we want to determine the standard deviation for the whole portfolio, we need to create a covariance matrix. And this will tell us the covariance or correlation of each of the five assets in our portfolio with each other. And that's the only way to truly accurately calculate the uh, standard deviation. So let's go ahead and create this covariance matrix. In order to do that, you're going to need to go to the data tab. And then there, you're going to see all the way on the right, there should be something called Analyze, which has Data Analysis and Solver. If you do not see that in your Excel, you have to enable it. And you can do that by just right-clicking up here and then hit Customize Ribbon and then go to Add-ins. And then where it says Ex Manage, make sure you're on Excel Add-ins and then hit Go. And you're going to have to check Analysis Tool Pack and you're going to have to check Solver Add-in. Let's hit OK. So now... To create the covariance matrix, we're just going to hit data analysis. And then once this box pops up, we're going to go to covariance and hit OK. And so it's asking for an input range. So the input range is going to be in raw data. And we're just going to grab all of the log normal daily returns. And I'm just including um, the first row with these tickers in it. So I selected everything. I'm going to hit control shift down arrow. So now I've got this entire range. I need to make sure that I hit labels in first row because I did have labels in the first row. And then for my output range, I'm just going to select here and then I'm going to click in there and I'm going to put it right here, uh, right where I've started that covariance matrix and hit OK. Uh, it's going to override. That's fine with me. I'll hit. That's fine. OK, so we've got our covariance matrix. So I'll just focus on one of these. So this value right here, it tells me the covariance between SPY and BND. But right here would be the same value. This would also be the covariance between BND and SPY. So we need to get these values over here. So I'm going to do equal 
actually real quick i gotta actually highlight all of these cells and then i'll do equal transpose and then i'm gonna select this whole range and then because this is an array formula i have to hold Control shift and then hit enter and i'm going to do the same thing right here i'm going to do equals transpose i'm going to grab these three Control shift enter select this range equals transpose highlight these two Control shift enter and then finally i just need this last one and there we go that's perfect so we've got our covariance matrix and now we've got our annual standard deviation and let me just explain this formula it's a little bit complicated but just follow it exactly as how i did it so really what it's doing is it's doing some matrix algebra. So this M mult formula just multiplies two matrices together. So this first one in here is multiplying these uh, optimal weights with the covariance matrix. And then this second one is multiplying the product of that first multiplication with a transposition of the optimal weights once again. Okay, I know it's a little bit complicated, but it is the mathematically correct way to do it. So just follow how I did here. Then we annualize that whole value by taking a uh, multiplied by 252. And then we're going to basically square the whole thing because this right here gives us the, uh, this gives us a variance. And then as I said earlier, standard deviation is the square root of variance. So that gives us our portfolio standard deviation. If we are optimally weighted in or sorry, if we are equally weighted in all five assets. Now let's focus on our returns. First, we need the expected return of the whole portfolio. And we can do this by doing equals sum product. And we'll select this array, and then comma, and then this array. And so what we're doing here is we're just saying uh, multiply this amount by this amount, then add the multiplication of this amount times this amount, and then do that for all five so we're just taking the weighted average of each of the annual returns and the weighting is based on the optimal weight so this portfolio as it stands right now would be expected to yield an annual return of 6.55 percent now we need to find the risk-free rate so that we can calculate the sharp ratio and so what i think is probably the easiest best way to do this is to just go and find the current 10-year u.s treasury rate the, a lot of you know finance textbooks say that you should use the treasury rate so for me as i'm making this video it's just 3.7 percent so i'm just going to take that 3.7 percent and copy it and paste it in here and so now this sharp ratio is calculated based on the expected return minus that risk-free rate so that gives us the uh the risk premium divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio and this gives us a 21.47 percent sharp ratio but now we need to find what are these optimal weights to maximize this sharp ratio. So go to data, then to solver and hit solver. And so we need to set the objective and the objective we're gonna set is wherever we have sharp ratio calculated. So that for me is C14. And I want to maximize it by changing these variable cells. So we're gonna be changing the weights. And now it's gonna be subject to three constraints, all right? So first constraint is that we need the total weight here, which is just the sum of all of these weights to equal 100%. So I'm just gonna put one, okay? Now the second constraint, we'll add another constraint, is that um, each of these weights here needs to be less than or equal to the maximum weight that we assigned here. So we'll hit add. And then finally, the third constraint is that each of these weights here must be greater than or equal to the minimum weight here. And we'll hit OK. So now we've got all three of these constraints and we should be ready to solve. So I'm going to hit solve. Uh, it's going to give, say that the solver found a solution and I'll just say keep solver solution and OK. So we find that the uh, highest possible sharp ratio under all of these conditions is 34.08%. It looks like the solver wants to maximize NASDAQ and then minimize SPY bonds and VTI. So I think one thing that would be interesting is what if we uh, lowered the minimum weights to 5%? And let's just see. So if we lower the minimum weights, we should be able to achieve a sharp ratio of higher than 34.08% because we're making the conditions less strict. So let's run this optimization one more time and see if we can get a uh, sharp ratio above 34.08%. Uh, so let's hit solver again, and then let's just solve. 
hit OK. So again, yep, there we go. Because we made it less strict, we were able to increase our potential sharp ratio. And now it's able to put more in gold and more, so more into gold and less into bonds and less into the world stock uh, index. So anyways, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe for more content just like it. Thank you for watching.